Hmm, you knew this video was coming, right? Well, today we are checking out the Koala Sampler app by Elf Audio and the Akai MPC. We're gonna compare them and then contrast them because I know a lot of people wanna know the similarities and differences between the two. And I think I'm qualified to break them down without being biased. I wanna be fair. Guys, I know a lot of you will probably jump into the comment section to be toxic. Please take that toxic behavior somewhere else. Let's be a community that is much more mature than just saying what is better and forcing a belief system on someone else so that they do not get to experience that and more about that a little later because i want to talk about that more i would love to see akai and elf audio work together rather than they rival each other let's get it so what do they have in common they both have a 16 pad layout they are both samplers they both excel at sampling in general now despite of what i'm going to say for the MPC and for the Koala Sampler, I will say this, the Koala Sampler is attached to some amazing hardware. Granted, and I thoroughly enjoy using the iPad for music production, as well as I enjoy using the MPC one for production because that's all it does is produce. Now, I don't wanna be biased towards either one of these because you know they show a lot of other similarities too. Like this has, a b c d different pad banks this has a b c d different pad banks too the only other thing that's different about the banks is you have e f g h which means that not only do you have 64 pads you actually have 128 now let's talk about the pads in general so i know a lot of people they say that they can't get jiggy with the ios screen And, and it could be problematic, you know, and I have the same drums over here. And I'm doing a terrible job. So, I mean, to me, it's one the same. If you concentrate, you can make the drum lines on here. And I have this in full level. So one of the biggest differences is if you're using the MPCs of the modern day or any MPC, you have velocity sensitive pads. And that might make or break, but for me, I just full level anyways. It depends on the production and whatnot. And that doesn't take away from this device too, because it could take MIDI. It can take MIDI and, you know, I can use this MPD-218 if I wanted that feel. Or if you wanted that feel, you can add those two to the equation. Now, granted, we'll get more into that later. One of the things that I do wish the MPC-1 had that, you know, the iPad has is a microphone. Like, don't get it twisted. That was one of my biggest gripes about the MPCs of today anyways, is that they don't have built-in microphones. I think if you were gonna make a competent sampler, that it should have a built-in mic on there so you can get jiggy with it anywhere. Yes, I said get jiggy with it. I'm regretting it right now. Kind of awkward, you know, that you have a modern day MPC that doesn't have a microphone. But, you know, I digress. So, you know, other things too, I, I believe, you know, if I want to talk about common things, you have a sequencer and you have a piano roll. The piano roll in itself shows a lot of similarities to the MPCs of modern day as well. As you know, the MPC invented the piano roll. And if people didn't know that, well, now you know. In here, you can edit stuff out and, you know, it's not too difficult to do. I mean, as far as drawing stuff out, it's about the similar. I think it's obvious that, you know, the iPad has a superior screen to the MPC. So if I was to go into grid mode, I, you could just double click on any of your MPCs. Uh, I would have to go and grab that pencil over here to get something in here, you know, and then I would have to kind of navigate versus like, you know, I could just do that all at once here. You know, you can always draw stuff out. You know, th these are things that do make a bit of a difference on the NPC. You know, you can draw them out and you can see it's a little different as far as the approach. I can't just touch the screen and grab it. I would have to do what you call edit end and then use, or actually I had to highlight something and then do edit in. 
and that's just a different workflow and then i had to use all these hotkeys up here now with the koala sampler there are things that you know I, I like like you have the addition of a keyboard here let me go ahead and exit out and you can pull the keyboard up let's choose a one shot or whatnot and then you have like a grid where you can play stuff I, I'm, I'm not 100% on this, but you have different scales. You have different scales, so if you wanted to one-shot something, uh, let me go back into that, and then we can see it. Select. And on the MPC, if we wanted to select like a one-shot, we had to go into a key group, and then uh, we go into pad perform, and then we can play something from there. Uh, and then that's when there's a clear-cut advantage too because the MPC, you know, the, today has different plugins. Like for instance here, I got Jura plug, uh, pulled up, and then if I hit program edit, I can mess with this. While on Koala Sampler, I would have to sample something in to get access to that. And that's kind of unfortunate, but that's how it goes, you know? And I'm, I'm gonna show you, it does have a keyboard too, so if you wanted to play unlike that and then you have note repeat too for those who didn't know that koala sampler has a uh, note repeat that was one of the things i was going to say that you know the mpc has an advantage on but you can see that the people that develop koala pays attention to what akai has established and then people in the community have reached out and told them that now yeah you look if you want to compete, then you got to have some of these features too. One of the things that I noticed people were talking about in the comment section is that you can record loops in there. And I was like, dude, do you understand what I'm talking about? Like, yes, I understand that you can record loops, but it's not a looper, like not with the sequencer. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So on the MPC, if I per se had a project here, and if I was to do something in the MPC, it and I wanted to play like you know something I you know I plug up a guitar or whatever I'll just go right into menu and then you have the looper here the looper will run simultaneously with the sequence so once I go in here and record stuff I can add effects and stuff like that which both of these have great effects the MPC clearly has way more effects but that doesn't mean that it's that much better than the Koala sampler. You know, you would record it in, you can overdub it as many times as you want, and you're able to establish like, you know, audio that you want to do. And also you can resample too. You can resample whatever track in the MPC because you can bounce the sample from the track. You can bounce the sample over here too as well. You can flatten pads and stuff like that. And that could be done on the Koala sampler. But you know, being able to record something inside of here isn't very possible, you know, and what someone said is that you could record it using it in here, but dude, where is the option at? And also, there's another thing I would like to mention. You do have probability, but that's also in the NPC as well. As artificial intelligence starts to pick up, uh, there is one thing I would like to talk about, and that is stem separation. If I split the stems, I have a choice between, you know, splitting the drums and going here and taking stuff out, vocals, leave the vocals bass in there, and then I can merge, split, boom. And then in a matter of seconds, it will go through the process. You know, it, it takes a little longer. The longer the sample is, it will go through the process. And then I have everything that I wanted in that sample and I can extract it, then chop it up and so forth. Uh, there is one thing I would say, you know, and this is where they both can work in unison, but this is why I wanna show you before we even talk about that, is just, I can record something in here. And let me go ahead and I gotta lower the threshold here cause it is a low sample. And so forth. And then we'll go through the process here. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. In the meantime, I'm gonna just go with that. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it into the editor so you can see how editing samples work in the MPC. And you have all these different processes here. But one of the biggest things that in every modern day MPC is that you have where it analyzes the key of the sample. That should be in this app. 
there's no excuses for it for the simple fact that this is attached to one of the finest pieces of electronics that exist. But don't get it twisted, I'm with everybody. I wish that stem separation could work on the modern day MPCs and I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen, but maybe not this generation. You know, I do like the data analysis tool that they have included, and that's their simple form of AI that I thoroughly enjoy. And then also you can play at different parts of the sample. And I think that's important too, because you know, when you wanna trim something real quick, that is comes in handy. And then once you do that process, discard, boom, then you just go on the chop, then you have your different chop modes. Similar to if I wanted to chop this up over here, uh, you have auto chop, you have the transient chop equal lazy. It had to come from somewhere, and then you know you can lazy chop here. Hey baby, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. They both have convenient ways of chopping samples, indeed. And then playing one shots, the only thing that makes this a little bit more difficult to use than the MPC-1 is the fact that it doesn't have any bass sounds. Then you also have the biggest thing where you have progressions. And let me go over here and uh, make the octave higher because it's on octave two instead of being a negative two instead of being on octave two. So let's go over here, F minor. And these are things that you wouldn't know if you would just check out my master classes. I have to plug it in, and I think it's important that you check out the link in the description box so you can learn more about the MPC because I don't think a lot of people understand the actual workflow of the MPC. They just go with the Koala sampler because it's straightforward. And truth be told, the more straightforward a device is, the more people can get into it. However, the education side does exist over here. I've done tons of free videos uh, on how to use the MPC-1. Now, this is another thing that I wanna tackle, and this is probably the last thing, is just food for thought, not a belief system, and I'm not acting as if they can't exist together because I do believe that they can exist together. I have my iPad plugged up to my MPC-1. There's other things that I could do to make this you know, more in unison. Like I can go over here, sync this up to, boom, I have Ableton Link. Then I can go over here and then I can do settings, Ableton Link here. And then it will find a local network and then it'll tell you if you wanna sync, start or stop and other things too as well. So I'm just gonna let it run real quick. And then I'll record it in. All right, now here we go. effects to this, I can add effects to it and, and so forth. Like dude, this like it's not about beefing about the gear. It's such a stupid thing. That's the wrong uh here it goes. Hey face. Make this shit nasty. Bro. Add another sound. Like, 
I could be pretentious and say like dumb shit that you would expect me to say like, oh, the NPC is so much better and or the iPad is so much better and it'll make some people happy, some people mad and people will just go crazy in the comment section. It's just so stupid to see that on a daily basis. It's, it's actually annoying because it's counterintuitive to what we do and that is creating music. We're supposed to learn different ways and not turn down or turn up our nose at an idea that could actually help us become better than what we were yesterday. But to the point, I will add this to the argument for whatever reason for people to go nuts in the comment section. I think one of the biggest arguments is this app costs five bucks when really it costs like 20 bucks because you have to pay for the mixer and then for samurai mode and, and for whatever else that comes out in the future, they make you do paid updates and that's fine. I mean, given that it has the stem separation for free, that's cool, but it's attached to something that costs about three to $1,300, depending on which version of the iPad that you roll with. I don't know how much Android tablets cost. Attaching it to something that exists, but you still paid about 13 versus paying 700 and getting to do music the way it is. Adversely, it does not have the stem separation yet on the MPC. And I'm not speaking because I know it's gonna happen, but it could happen. Now, I'm taking away the MPC. Now, let's say you wanted to add a controller. Well, that's more money, right? And you have to spend money on a dongle. This dongle right here exclusively costs a hundred plus dollars. You can get a cheap dongle from, you know, Apple or from some brand, you know, out there, but still it will cost you money. If you add a mini controller, then we're talking, you know, maybe a hundred dollars or so forth. I mean, you can get one on the used market. You can add a MPK a mini plus. I recommend that if you was going to use anything on iOS because it has pads and keys. Now let's just say you want to add an audio interface to further improve the sound quality of what you're sampling inside of here. So let's just throw this audio interface in here. Well, let's just say that this audio interface is $200 even though I, I think it's way more money for the Vault 276. You can buy a Scarlett 2i2 for probably cheaper or around $200. You plug it up into your dongle and now you have an MPC theoretically and you can just sample stuff in and all this other great stuff. Well, guess what? Congratulations. You have spent enough money to get an MPC live too. Now with all things considered, maybe you don't want an MPC Live 2. Let's just take the MPC out of it. You have spent more money and you could have got a Sonicware sample track. You, you get what I'm trying to say, but if you don't mind having a setup like this and spending that kind of money, then that's fine. Some people actually like working like this. I totally like this setup. That's why I have it. At the end of the day, it's about personal preference. If you like making beats on your iPhone, which costs 500 to 1200 dollars, or an iPad or an Android phone or whatever, do that, no doubt. And nobody's gonna be mad at you for it, but don't try to force a belief system on someone. Vice versa, if you have an MPC and you don't see the appeal of working with iOS apps, don't force your belief system on someone else. Do you, bro, for real. To the right of me, I have more content for that ass. Make sure that you subscribe. Yeah, Elf Audio did a great job. And then coupling those two together, man, it's, it's actually fun as hell. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I might use that setup more often than you think. Did ass for real on that one.